let's talk a little bit now about what you were talking about, some of these treatment decisions, what we've got out there. We've got the, the short-acting, the long-acting bronchodilators, long-acting muscarinics, uh, inhaled corticosteroids. How do you make decisions about these things? What do you use in whom? Yeah, so the, uh, you know, this is very, very complicated because we do have a lot of it was choices. simple, I wouldn't be asking you. But a, a lot of them are me too's, all right? And I think the best place to go and would be the, you know, the gold guidelines really has made it very nice and simple. I think everybody needs a short-acting rescue medicine like albuterol or epitropium or the two together. That's a Saba. As a Saba or a Saba or mm -hmm. even in combination. And that's the kind of thing like in asthma, you can actually, if it's the only thing you have, you could pre-treat yourself before you walk and you get something out of it. Most people start with a long-acting bronchodilator, a 12-hour or 24-hour, and that could be either a uh, anti-muscarinic agent or an, a beta agonist, a uh, long-acting beta agonist. Or what I really like to make life really simple is both, all right, as the first, uh, first drug. Now, what everyone has used for years are inhaled steroids and long-acting beta agonists because that's simple. That's an a, a really good asthma therapy, first line there. And then all these yeah, patients are wheezing. You know, don't, well. don't do first line there either. Well, anyway. It's, the ICS uh, is. Yeah, but that revolutionized the lives of our patients with, um, you know, with, with, uh, with asthma and COPD. But the ICS is first line. You're right, Barb. The, uh, uh, but anyway, but one size fits all. Well, that's what I was saying. It's a simple story, simple marketing. Use Advair or whatever, you know, Simbacort, and you're, you know, you're, Her you're happy. Her blood pressure has gone to 280 over oh, at 150. Least. At what least. just happened at here? At least. But I think that it is, as you pointed out, it's a real problem. It is not a one-size-fits-all. And when you look at, at therapy for COPD, uh, it is frequently this combination of a long-acting bronchodilator and ICS. That is not the appropriate not right. agree, first therapy. Yep. And I know we that's what you were saying. Uh, and what is the appropriate first therapy? The f appropriate first therapy, I like to think of it as a hierarchy. As you were starting, the short-acting bronchodilator, you act add a long-acting or both classes of long-acting bronchodilator. And then there are indications for going on to add other medications. It is not an automatic then you just add okay. ICS if they're still not doing well. Now, one of the things Byron taught me uh -oh. I, you did teach me something, Byron, was that if you give a long-acting bronchodilator or a, a muscarinic drug, you can actually shrink lung volumes over yeah. time, which is, if you will, and forgive the oversimplification, a chemical lung volume reduction. And that function. improves function. So where does that fit here? Are they saying that? Is that what you're hearing? Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, okay, so the, the two bronchodilators the Lava Lama combination, uh, which which I happen to like a lot, and then I can defend that scientifically, but I, I don't want to go off on that. But you might have to pugilistically here eventually. Anyway, no, 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 we no, agree completely. No, 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 we agree on that. We're but, 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 but yeah. the big, it was the ICS. The, Peter, you put, yeah. you put your finger on what it does. The most important thing is the shortness of breath is driven by the air trapping, the hyperinflation. That's why I like it, because if you don't respond to one, the other one's there, there's no escalation in side effects uh, when you put the two together. So anyway, that's a nice combination. Now, what about the inhaled steroid lob? Another very nice combination. Or even the triple therapy. And Gold gives us nice guidelines. There's an asthma COPD overlap. People with a lot of eosinophils as markers of, a, of allergic inflammation, 300 cells per cubic millimeter. There's a lot of little, and those are people, people with severe disease, and most importantly, people who have a lot of exacerbations, the frequent flyers, they need that steroid. And uh, so uh, to make it pretty simple, monotherapy with a, a long-acting agent and maybe dual bronchodilators and then either uh, the triple or just ICS lava. Let me so add Peter. a layer of complication. Okay. Go ahead. No, but, but I think the message here is COPD is a treatable disease. Yes. It can be treated and these bronchodilators have changed the natural history. Improve okay. lung function, quality of life. So the foundation is long-acting bronchodilators. 
most of the time now I use in the fixed combination on active because you give two to two different mechanisms for the price of one. You know, sure, that's when sure. it comes down. And there's, no increase, and there's no increased side effects, at least none and that we've been no able to find. And that's a really important message that I don't think primary care still hears all the time is you're using two long-acting bronchodilators, but they are different mechanisms of action. So yes, you use them together and they're synergistic. They're synergistic.